Hi, I'm Clara Rose, and this is Influence Matters. Each week I come to you with tips, tricks, tools, resources, hacks, secrets, whatever it is you want to call them, to help people just like you to strategically and intentionally cultivate your influence. Welcome back once again. Let's get started. So, of course, I don't want to go too far without saying thank you to our show sponsor, Rosedale Publishing, for helping to make this possible, and a shout out to Tampa Bay Multimedia for making this show possible as well. So, thank you so much. Okay, you know each week I like to start the show with a viewer comment, question, um, something along those lines. So today we do have a question for you and it came from Mark B. And he says, I'm embracing your influence method of write, speak, and lead to become better known, but I'm concerned about getting exposure. Do you have any tips for getting exposure for my book once it's published? Mark B. So of course, Mark, yes, but I don't think that you need to wait until your book is published to start working on getting some exposure for yourself. And there's a couple reasons for that. First of all, you need to decide how you'd like to be published. So if you're going to be self-published or use a hybrid publisher, that's l it's less critical. But if you're going to want to go traditional publishing, it's pretty important that you have a platform or you're building your platform right now, your fans, followers, those people. And the reason is traditional publishing houses and the agent that you need to get a traditional publishing house to look at you, they want to see that you have a social media following especially you first-time authors. If you don't have a book out there already and a fan base of followers who love your work, then you're going to need to work a little harder because you need to show up with a platform full of people. I've heard as much as low as 20,000 followers. So for someone who's just beginning and doesn't have a platform, doesn't have followers, or has a couple thousand, that can seem super overwhelming. So you think, oh, I'll never get there. Just know... You can get there. There's some techniques to get you there. But if you're still at the 1,500, 2,500, it's going to be much more difficult for you to get a traditional publisher to look at your work. Now, the reason that really is, is gone are the days when the publishing house did a bunch of, of publicity for you. There was a time when a new author could get advances good advances on something that the publisher thought, ooh, this is a great story, this is going to be a bestseller, and they'd give you an advance on it. It didn't matter if you had a bunch of followers, because there really weren't followers at that point. But now that, that those days are gone, social media really is where we're going to get the attention for our book, and our publishing house is really going to count on that as well. We still see some you know, book signings out there and some um, publishing houses doing some PR work, but it's not like the good old days. So just something to consider right now. So Mark, just think about it in that way. Am I going traditional? Or am I thinking that I'll just do a hybrid publishing service or even self-publish? So you're going to have to look at it a little differently, but if you're going to be a self-publisher or a hybrid published book, now is the time to start talking about your book and not coincidentally, today we're going to go over a little bit of that to give you some more tools to put in your tool bag, if you will. So let's jump in and get started. Today we're going to talk about three strategies for gaining exposure. Now this could be for your book, or it could be for your ministry, business, cause. It doesn't have to necessarily be about your book. It's gaining exposure in general. 
We're going to talk about social media. Those are your posts and your ads and your sales funnels. We're going to talk about article marketing. So those are our blog posts, guest posts, editorial calendars, things you need to know about. And then media attention, like interviews, awareness, and press releases. So we're going to break those down one at a time for you so that it doesn't sound as scary as it might at first. OK, let's jump right in. You know I love savvy tweets, so I have to start out with a savvy tweet today that made sense to me. Strategically and intentionally, plan your marketing efforts. Success is not accidental. You can always find me over at Clara Rose Chat on Twitter. All right, let's really work. All right, start with social media. That was the first thing I wanted to talk with you about. We're going to talk about posts and ads. Those build anticipation for the book as it comes out, as you prepare the manuscript. Of course, excerpts from the book or from your speech, if that's what you're trying to promote, to get people excited about what's coming and to show off your, um, your skill, if you will. And then, of course, we're going to talk about sales funnels because that's the process where you're going to actually sell your book. And we can use social media to make that happen for you. All right, let's unpack that a little bit, shall we? Let's start with social media. Posts, ads that help you build anticipation. Oh, wait. I have someone in my ear. Thank you. <laughs> OK, that's the fun of the live show. All right, let's talk about our social media posts and boosting and paid ads. Oh, wait. A social media calendar. It might be a term that you've heard. It might not be a term that you've heard. If you don't have one, my goodness, you need one. A social me media calendar is really just a calendar where you're going to schedule in advance all of your posts, all of your ads, and things of that nature. Even your blogs, but we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. So when you talk about posting for your book, let's start there. We start, start talking about posting for your book. Of course, you're just going to go create yourself some graphics where you can start talking about this exciting new book that's coming. If you are talented enough, you could also create a mock-up of your book cover. Or perhaps you've hired someone to do your book cover for you, and they can give you a 3D model. That's a great thing to put on your social media feed to say, hey, did you know that I have a book coming out? And then whenever you think that your, your published date might be. You don't have to give them an exact date if that scares you. You can just say the fall or the spring of 2021, whatever it is that works for you. Just start talking about what you have coming out. And then, of course, other blog posts about the adventure of writing a book would also be wonderful for your followers, especially people who are interested in that process, to be able to say on any given day, oh my gosh, today we just wrapped up chapter three. It's you know, final clean copy, it's in the bag, and we're moving on. So just those little bits that help bring people along will build the anticipation and the excitement for this coming project. So the more you talk about it without, you know, going overboard, of course, um, the better. Get out there and talk about it. Now, after we get some of those posts out there, let's look at which posts are doing best. Now, I do it on my social media calendar. But you can do it however you'd like. So I am a, a bit strategic and a bit, I'm a bit that way. <laughs> I like to be six months out. So I plan well in advance because I'm super strategic. I want to know that what I'm posting is well planned out in advance. So I use a couple of different tools that help me. You don't have to. Um, I like Mead Edgar, but Hootsuite and some of those will let you pre-post those you want to come out, say, next week or next month. I don't, I don't like to have to sit at my social media mode every day and work on it, so I batch it. Like, OK, here's all my posts for the month, and then I can just schedule them. You can also schedule, by the way, in Facebook if that's what you're, you're talking about specifically. But like Meet Edgar will let you post, pre-post, schedule, if you will, um, as far out as you'd like. So you might say, I'm going to do all my month's posts right now. And this is a great way to say, all right, I don't want to overwhelm my people, so I'm only going to talk about my book or content or whatever once a day. 
So you can go in and tell Meet Edgar when to do that for you, and then just throw in the ads and that'll be done. It'll just happen for you automatically. And then as you watch your, your posts that are doing the best, if you're not looking at your analytics, can you hear me do that? Give you the finger there. Look at your analy analytics and see what's doing the best. If somebody, if there's already a bunch of engagement, there's already a bunch of people sharing and liking and loving and looking at it, that means it resonated with people. Those are great things to use for ads. So go ahead and do maybe a, a couple of paid and see if you don't get even more engagement. Okay, so I could do a whole 30 minutes on nothing but your social media calendar, and we don't have time for that today, so let's move right along. All right, next, of course, I have to just really quickly throw in one more tweet for you. So your next savvy tweet, remember to keep your social sharing balanced. If you give value 80% of the time, your tribe won't be annoyed by the 20% that is marketing and sales. Balance is really important. I'm sure that you are just like me, and there's been times where you have unfollowed someone because, yikes, all you got from them all day long was, was buy this, buy that, sign up here, buy, buy, buy. And it gets annoying, so people will leave. So make sure that you're giving value more often than you're asking for a sale or doing a marketing message. Okay. Moving right along. Let's talk about sharing excerpts. And this is still in the social media piece. Sharing excerpt is a great way to market. It's very powerful. Agents, publishers, and the media are paying attention. Agents are out there looking for people that they might be able to sign. Lately, I've seen some contests even where I say, hey, join the contest, and, and it's really an agent or a publisher trying to attract new talent. So grabbing excerpts out of what you've already created. So say we're on chapter three, we'll go back to chapter one and pull out a couple of things that just are good, good nuggets or tidbits or tantalizing stuff and make that into a post and put it on there. Those excerpts might get you recognition that you wouldn't actually get until your, your book is out there. So don't waste the opportunity to get those out there. Okay, running out of time already, my goodness. Let's talk about sales funnels. What is a sales funnel, Clara? Well, sales funnel is just the process of attracting attention and putting people through a process of awareness, interest, decision-making, and action to actually have them make a purchase. So people need to be aware that you even exist or that your work exists, gauge whether that they're even interested in what you have to say. They need help making a decision and then taking action is like the last step. So definitely important to um, get people in your sales funnel as quickly as possible. There's a couple of different platforms that I, I like personally, but there are many, many out there. So feel free to look around. But I like ClickFunnels. It's just a great way to really simply create a funnel that the beginnings can just be a Facebook ad or an email where people click and it drops them in. And it tells them, hey, here's what's coming. Works through those steps of awareness to interest to decision to action. At the end, they have an opportunity to buy your book or pre-buy your book or get in the mailing list because the book is coming out. So ClickFunnels, Kajabi, Teachable, there's a bunch of them out there that you can explore to set up your funnel for when the book is ready to come out. Wouldn't it be great to already have a list of people saying, ooh, ooh, when it comes out, I want one. Oh, I'd love to have a signed copy. Awesome. Now, you could use uh, your WordPress site, of course, and have a plugin. Your plugin will, um, like wish list member or one of those will let you set up a sales funnel on your website. Um, if your web developer does that for you, then you don't have to worry about just tell them what you're trying to accomplish. And then, of course, you could be the crazy person and do it manually. I call it Excel insanity. <laughs> so you could track it manually. Uh, as people say, oh, I'm interested in your book. It's just the automated process is so much more pleasant. So I'm just going to encourage you to automate that sales funnel in some way. All right, moving right along. Running out of time today, article marketing. So of course you have to know that this one is near and dear to my heart. Article marketing is just gaining exposure by writing articles. Simple as it sounds. So today we wanna talk about your home-based content. What do I mean by that? Guest posts, which we all know what those are but may not understand the value. And then we wanna talk about editorial 
calendars. What are those? Where do we find them? And how do we utilize them? All right. So let's start first with our, our home base. What do I mean by home base? I mean a place that you have ultimate control over that place that you have ownership of. For me, it is a WordPress, self-hosted WordPress site and a Kajabi site. I have control over those things. As long as I pay my hosting bill and my Kajabi bill, nothing's going to go away. Nothing's going to happen. I have 100% say over it. So what I put there isn't going to go away because an algorithm or some weird thing happens. It's not going to go away. So to me, home base is a super important place where you could be doing some article marketing. So your blog, for instance. Not everyone is um, wanting to be a blogger, but I just promise you the value of having your own blog is pretty substantial. So consider a self-hosted WordPress site or something similar where you can put your words in a place where you control them and they won't go away without your permission. Okay, <sighs> let's talk about guest posting. Now, I've just recently heard someone say that guest posting was dead. I disagree. Guest posting is alive and well, and it works, I promise you. What it does is it gives you access to somebody else's audience. So if you can find a way to get on it with a trusted influencer, I promise you they're looking for content that is valuable for their audience. So hop on the internet and do a search and find out who might be your target market that somebody else is already serving in some way. So for me, it might be somebody who is, has writers that they're working with, but they don't necessarily offer the same service that I do. So I'm very specific in what I offer. I help them write the book, like tan tangible, hands-on, side-by-side work. But there's a lot of places out there on the, online where they just are giving tips or, or tricks or, or community to writers. So this is a great place for me to go find an influencer and say, hey, I'd love to do a, a guest post for your audience. Would you be interested? Many times they will be interested. They might be interested in doing a, a guest post on your blog if you have an audience. Either way, it's just a great place to get attention of other viewers who wouldn't have seen you otherwise. Okay, moving right along. Finding relevant magazines. Now, yes, I'm talking about magazines that you can buy in the store, which fewer and fewer people do that, in my opinion, but also the online magazines. So you're going to want to look for magazines that are relevant, ones that are going to matter to the audience that you're trying to reach. So you want to look through a few of their issues, whether it's in person, so you buy the magazine, or if it's online, you can scroll through a few of their past issues. Some will even send you, if you say, hey, can I get the last six issues? You know, I'm, I'm considering advertising. Can I get a couple of past issues? And they'll just send them to you for free. That's no skin off their nose, and you might be an advertiser. So take some time and look through, make sure you're familiar with their content, what kinds of things they write, what kinds of things they advertise. Pay attention to whether it's a good fit. It needs, definitely needs to be relevant for you. And then of course, you can just ask for their media kits. Hey, I'd like to get a media kit from you. Most of the time you can just submit an email or they'll send you to their website where often you can find the media kit right there that you can download. And then of course, their editorial calendar is usually a part of their media kit. But if it's not, you might find it on their website or open up the front of the magazine to the, the where it says from the editor. And often at the bottom in the fine print, you'll find out how you can get your hands on their editorial calendar. So that is where they determine in advance, mind you, what they're going to be talking about, what the theme is, if you will, for each issue. So find a theme that resonates with you, that's a good fit for you and perhaps your audience, and see if there's something that you can't write related to what they're already going to be talking about in that particular theme or that particular issue. Do your homework, it can be super embarrassing if you reach out to someone and say, hey, I'd love to write an article for your such and such magazine, and then them say, oh, what was your favorite article? 
and you think, oh, shoot, I probably should have bought one of their magazines and looked for an article. <laughs> so do your homework, and you'll avoid embarrassing yourself a little bit. Those editorial calendars are just gold. You can find them online. There are aggregates of editorial calendars. Do your research, but find places where you can do some article marketing for exposure. Okay, running out of time, so I'm going to go fast. The next savvy tweet for you, find your audience now. Getting your first byline, that's your article, will start to create followers and fans of your voice. Okay, that's an important one. All right, moving along. Media attention. <sighs> Interest interviews, awareness segments, and press releases. These are the three important things that we're going to look at in midi media attention today. Okay, first one. Your business ministry or cause is newsworthy. People just need to know about you. So I call this interest interviews. And this is those interviews that you have um, on the TV or the radio or, you know, wherever you can find an audience. Maybe it's an online where you're going to get interviewed online. That's fine, too. It's an audience where you have something interesting to say around a topic. That's really just finding out what they're talking about currently and having a relevant topic that they can go, oh, this totally fits. Let's interview this person. Now, media is going to be a little bit different in that you better be well prepared when you reach out to them. Make sure that your one sheet is done. Remember, we talked about that previously. That's just who you are, how to connect with you, what you talk about, what you do in one sheet. One piece of paper. That's why it's called the one sheet. We just need that all in one place. So when you submit a, a proposal for an article or submit a proposal for an interview, that you can send along your one sheet so they know who the heck you are. Because they don't. <laughs> so they don't want to they don't ha have to work to decide whether they want to interview you or not. Make it super simple for them. I find a great place is if you use Google Drive or Dropbox to have it already loaded in there, your own media kit. So when someone says, I'd love to see an article from you, or even you find an email address, think, ah, this is a person I need to connect with, it's at your fingertips and it's easily shareable. To say, hey, if you're interested, here's my media kit. Be prepared or they will just move right along. Okay, running out of time, so let's talk faster, Clara. Awareness segments. So <laughs> awareness, what do I mean by that? Every day, week, month, whatever it is, has another whatever. It's National Blueberry Day or it's National Whatever Day. Join the conversation. So I'm always surprised. <laughs> you could just Google it. Every day has multiple things that it is. So any given day, it could be you know, National Sandal Wearer Day or <laughs> whatever. Go search and find the ones that are relevant to what you want to talk about and join the conversation. That's what an awareness segment is. And media is always looking for those. Okay, moving right along. So press releases, super often overlooked. A press release is really just a, not, in, not you saying it about yourself, but saying it like you're somebody else, a way to talk about something's happening, like your book coming out, or you just booked a huge speaking engagement. These are super exciting things, and people want to know about them. It's newsworthy. So I say create a list of all the potential places where you could find someone who will take your press release so that it's always on hand and nearby. Always include your one sheet because I promise you they probably don't know who you are. And then be sure to make timely submissions. If you have a speaking engagement that's happening tomorrow or even next week, probably it's not going to be timely if you submit today. <laughs> There's a lag time that happens. So make sure that you give them plenty of time to know that it's coming down the pike. I say two to three months is a great lag time. That way, even for articles, that way they know that it's available and they know in time to make decisions about it. You're not the only person submitting articles or submitting press releases. Make sure that it's relevant, make sure that it's timely, and then make sure they have all the information so that they can make a quick decision about whether yours is one that they want to include. 
if you're interested, there's an online place where you can even find places to send your press releases to. Most of them are, are the written word, but it has some local um, radio stations and some TV channels. And so do some research and find yourself some places to do some great press releases. Talk about what you have coming up. Okay, I can't let you go without having another savvy tweet. Content-driven media need people to interview. Make it easy for them to interview you. I promise you, if you make it hard, they're not gonna, they're not gonna bother. We're all busy. Okay, let's do a quick wrap up before we run out of time and just run over them really quickly. The three strategies that you're gonna use for gaining more exposure. Your social media, your posts, your ads, and your sales funnels. Of course, your article marketing, which is your blogs, your posts, like guest posts, and the editorial calendar with magazines that you're gonna use to reach out for relevant articles. And then media attention, of course. So these are your interviews, one-on-one -on -one interviews, your awareness segments of things that are already happening in the world around you, and then those press releases that are gonna get attention when you have something exciting happening, like the launch of your new book. Something that might be super worthy is to have pre-planned, from a press release standpoint, pre-planned your book signing. So throw a big party, get excited that you have this thing happening and pre-plan to have a press release. The more people who know about your book signing, the more people are actually gonna show up for your book signing. Of course, your mom and your dad and your brother and your cousin and your best friend are gonna show up and maybe your local support group or whatever that you're a part of um, well, that sounded wrong, not support group, but you know, networking group, that's what I meant. Those people are probably gonna show up and support you, but what about those other people who would love to hear what you have to say or interested in your message? They wanna know about it too, and a press release is gonna make that happen for you. Okay, I am totally out of time today, more content than time. Thank you for showing up once again to Influence Matters. I will see you next week, my friends. Oh, <laughs>